Amos chapter 9. I saw the Lord standing beside the altar, and he said, Strike the tops of the pillars that the thresholds may shake, and break them in pieces on the head of all of them, and I will kill the last of them with the sword, and there shall not one of them flee away, and there shall not one of them escape. Though they dig into Sheol, there my hand will take them, and though they climb up to heaven, there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out from there. And though they be hidden from my sight in the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent and it will bite them. Though they go into captivity before their enemies, there I will command the sword and it will kill them. I will set my eyes on them for evil, not for good. For the Lord Yahweh of armies is he who touches the land and it melts. And all who dwell in it will mourn and it will rise up wholly like the river and will sink again like the river of Egypt. It is he who builds his rooms in the heavens and has founded his vault on the earth. He who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth, Yahweh is his name. Are you not like the children of the Ethiopians to me? Children of Israel, says Yahweh. Haven't I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the surface of the earth, except that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says Yahweh. For behold, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all the nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve. Yet not the least kernel will fall from the earth. All the sinners of my people will die by the sword, who say, Evil won't overtake nor meet us. In that day, I will raise up the tent of David who is fallen and close up its breaches, and I will raise up its ruins, and I will build it up as in days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, says Yahweh, who does this. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the one treading grapes him who sows seeds, the sweet wine will drip from the mountains and the flow from the hills. I will bring my people Israel back from captivity and they will rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They will plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land and they will no more be plucked up out of their land which I have given them, says Yahweh, your God. It's the last chapter of Amos. And finally, <laughs> something encouraging. And um, someone said that uh, there's not an encouraging thing in the entire book of Amos. Well, they were wrong. There is something encouraging right here at the end of chapter 9. But they are right. The whole book is full of judgment. And there are so many things in there that when you read them, you think, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me. You know, uh, especially that one about being comfortable in Zion, you know, that was chapter six or somewhere there. And, um, but here, this chapter starts with the fifth vision. So the last three chapters of Amos, there were five visions, three in chapter seven, one in chapter eight, one in chapter nine. And here is a vision of God standing in the, by, beside the altar. And um, the Lord standing beside the altar and the Lord says, strike the pillars and the thresholds and shake them and break them in pieces on the heads of everyone. It's the temple. The Lord stand by the altar in the temple. This is in Jerusalem. And he says, strike the pillar. In other words, the, the temple is struck and shaken and destroyed. So the, we haven't got to the encouraging part yet. <laughs> the, the chapter Amos 9 starts with a destruction of the temple, a vision. But as we go down, we find out that the Lord says in verse 11 in that day when's that day well in the day that the temple's getting destroyed i will raise up the tent of david who is fallen and close up its breaches and i will raise up its ruins and build it as in days of old and goes on to say all these wonderfully encouraging things and i'll cover one or two of them more in a minute so there's this thing called the tent of david or in some versions the tabernacle of david that's going to be re-raised up so there's a debate about what this tavern actually actually is one of the debates is that it's like the restoration of the kingdom you know like israel as a kingdom is going to get its king back 
at the point that this was prophesied, the kingdom wasn't destroyed. You know, the, the king of, of um, Judah was King Isaiah. And um, we read that at the start of the book of Amos. So, and he's from the lineage of King David. So this is not, well, it wouldn't seem like it was talking about the restoration of the kingdom, but it kind of is. It kind of is. But the really clear point is the temple was destroyed. In, um, in, when David was a king, he actually had a tent. He actually had a thing called the tabernacle of David. Now, when we were going through the book of First and Second Samuel, we talked about David's tabernacle. There was the actual tabernacle in the wilderness where there was, you know, the outer court, the holy place, the most holy place, the priests were there, they offered the sacrifices there. But when David brought the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines, we talked all about this in, um, in the books of Samuel, he didn't take the Ark of the Covenant and set it up in the tabernacle. He set up his own tent, his own tabernacle. And it, it didn't kind of follow with the pattern of the other tabernacle. This tabernacle of David was a place where there was praise and worshipping going on nonstop. He put, all, he put this roster of musicians and they were worshipping the Lord nonstop. That's where a lot of the Psalms come from. And David would himself just go down to the tent and just seek the Lord and pray. He would just go right into the Lord's presence where the Ark of the Covenant was any time he wanted. It wasn't like the other tabernacle and it wasn't like the temple. In the temple, you could go and make a sacrifice, but you couldn't just go into the Lord's presence any old time. There were priests. You had to come to the priest. The priest had to go and make offerings on your behalf. But in David's tabernacle, he wasn't a priest. But David went any time he wanted into the Lord's presence. Now, I know there are, all, there are a lot of theories about this tabernacle of David, and I, I know I haven't even really listed what they all were. Some of them are about the kingdom being restored. Some of them are about praise and worship being restored. Some of them are about the end of the world. They're all different theories. I, I feel like it's all got to do with Jesus. In, in fact, if in doubt about a prophecy, think, think it's got something to do with Jesus. <laughs> And um, I think it's got to do with the gospel. In the days, in those days, I will raise up a tent. In the days that the old covenant is being destroyed and the old temple worship is gone, the Lord's going to raise up a new worship and the Lord will be the priest. This, and this is because remember the Lord Jesus is the king and the priest in the new covenant. In the old covenant, you had kings and priests. But in the new covenant, the Lord Jesus is our king and our high priest. And he's going to raise up the tent of David, this tabernacle where there's no holy place, most holy place. You just go in before the Lord and you can seek the Lord for yourself. You don't need a priest. The Lord Jesus is your priest. And in that day, um, so in the days that the, the, the physical temple is shook and destroyed and that's all gone, the Lord's raising up this new tabernacle of David. It's called the new covenant, the covenant of grace. And you can just go into the Lord. It's the tabernacle of David. It's fabulous. <laughs> and Jesus is our king and our high priest. And when we get to verse 13, it says, the, Behold, the days will come when the plowman will overtake the reaper. In other words, the person sowing seeds is going faster than the person harvesting the fruit. In other words, there's that much fruit, the seed sower catches up with the one harvesting. It's talking about the gospel and the kingdom of God and the church is growing and the gospel is going out and there are churches being established. You think about it. There are churches everywhere in the world. There, <laughs> the, the kingdom of God is big. Well, this is gospel times. The Lord says in verse 14, I will restore my people Israel from captivity. That's what we have. The captivity isn't captivity to Babylon. It's captivity to sin and God's people, those in faith, have been restored and we are rebuilding cities. That's the New Jerusalem, the church. We're going to plant vineyards and drink wine. We're going to make gardens and bear fruit. There's going to be harvest. That's people being brought into the kingdom of God. And the Lord says in the last verse of Amos, it's super encouraging. No more will they be plucked out of the land which I've given them, says Yahweh your God. And that is true. We've been given, the Bible says, a kingdom which cannot be shaken. We've been given a, a, a land which cannot be taken from us. It's impossible. We have a joy that cannot be taken away. 
we will not be plucked out of this land. So I think this tabernacle of David, it's all to do with Jesus and the new covenant and the grace we have. And it's super, super fabulous. <laughs> so we push through eight and a half chapters of judgment and we've got to the end of chapter nine and we found this promise and we look back on it. We're in the new covenant. We look back on it and we say, thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your grace. I thank you for the new covenant. I thank you for the joy. Thank you we've been given a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Thank you for all of these things and more. And I pray to help us to live lives worthy of the Lord our God and to bring honor and joy to you. In Jesus' name, amen.